Hey guys, welcome to another edition of Toad Shooting Show. I always like to have a, a smoke before I I do my bench rush shooting because it relaxes me. And I found some more interesting information in this Lyman Ideal catalog from 1950. And it has to do with cartridges regarding bench rest shooting. Let's take a look at this. So far, the 22 caliber high velocity cartridges with jacketed bullets have proven to be the most accurate combinations. The most winning combinations have been the 219 Wasp, the 219 Donaldson, the 22 250, and the 220 Swift. We should also include the 220 Wilson Arrow, not to be overlooked is the improved 219 zipper. These cartridges, when loaded somewhat under maximum, will all give extremely fine accuracy with the right bullet and the right powder charge. Now one thing happened in 1950 as well. Mike Walker from Remington introduced the 222 Remington and on the bench rest circuit, the 222 Remington reigned supreme until 1973, to where at that time the 22 PPC and the 6 PPC came out, and after that, everything completely changed. What we have here today is a Saco bench rest rifle made in the 80s. And this is chambered in 6 PPC USA. So let's see how it shoots. This is a 1989 Sako single shot bench rest rifle in 6 PPC USA. These rifles are fairly rare and in the late 80s sold for around $1,200. The craftsmanship was exquisite and these rifles are sought after because of the beautiful wood, hand checkering, externally adjustable target trigger, and super solid single shot action. The original barrel was worn out and was only capable of random groups slightly under an inch at 100 yards, so to improve accuracy we replaced the barrel with a new Douglas 1 in 13 twist and 6 PPC USA chambering. The gun should shoot pretty well, but even with bedding and free floating, for today's standards, the stock does not track as well as newer designs. If I was competing in IBS short range, the angle on the rear is required. I don't have very good luck with stocks that are shaped this way. It's a very beautiful rifle, but I want to improve how it tracks in the rest and the rear bag. Here's the first 15 shot 300 yard group. to the nine. <laughs> There's a one forty eight low X count at three hundred yards. Look close at the rear of the rifle. It drops too far, too fast. The muscle jump in the front is very obvious, and under these conditions, it would be very hard to have a gun provide any shot-to-shot -shot consistency, which is a major contributor to smaller groups. We're going to make a nice bag rider using reinforced fiberglass. The catalyst in this tube is meant to be used for the whole quart of glass. Because I want a quicker set, I'm going to use a bit more catalyst to reduce dry time. I have made a form to fit within the stock dimensions and I've also allowed for the hole to attach through the sling swivel fastener. It helps to work out the air to reduce pinholes. You'll get more pinholes when you increase 
with more hardener as well. I protected the stock with saran wrap and it has been coated with an insulator wax for a clean release. We have about four minutes before this is dry enough to remove. I have specific marks where the stock is to sit in the glass. This was planned in advance. Within about four minutes the casting can begin to be stripped off. You want to be careful not to alter the shape. At this point the glass due to an exothermic reaction is about 200 degrees. It's hot enough to damage the stock and easier to remove when it is in a semi-cured state so it's a good idea to get it out of there as soon as possible. Here's the rough casted bag rider and after some sanding and trimming here's the finished product. It has one attaching screw right where the rear sling swivel mount would go. Notice right off the bat the gun's coming back nice and straight and I have a little ring and a rope in the front so it will go back up onto uh, the same spot so the, the gun's going to start out once you pull the trigger it's going to it's going to track rearward kind of in the same way every time. That's the plan anyways. This is our first five shot group at 100 yards with the 6 PPC. This is our second group. You can tell by the two shots that we've gotten the muzzle jump out of the way. But when you do something like that, now you have to go back and redo all of your load development. Really appreciate you guys watching. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're a new viewer, and hit the notification bell to be notified of future videos. Thanks for watching.